Good day, everyone. In our previous lectures, we have been looking at various maneuvers performed by the drone and various operations that the drone performs for going from one place to another. However, the main components that help in performing all these operations are the various sensors that are on board of the drone. With modern drones being made to maximize ease of use, it's also become easy to take for granted just how complex and well designed these drones are. Aside from the mechanical components that allow a drone to generate lift and maneuver in midair, drones also imply an array of sensors that constantly collect information from their surroundings. With this information, drones can maintain their positions, determine how fast they are, and avoid obstacles. Let's look at what exactly are these sensors and how do they work. The most basic of the drone sensors, gyroscopes, are cheap and basic enough to be integrated even into even cheap mini drones. Despite the very simple scientific principle that govern how gyroscopes work, they are still highly essential tools that are used for navigation in high end aircraft and space shuttles. Gyroscopes work on the principle of conservation of angular momentum. Simply put, a gyroscope consists of a spinning disc that is mounted on a frame. While the disc is spinning, the axis of its rotation remains in place, regardless of the tilting or rotation of the frame where it is mounted. By establishing an inertial reference frame, a gyroscope can be used to determine the rate of rotation, degree of tilt, and angular velocity of a moving object. Gyroscopes are an all-round tool used for measuring or maintaining drone orientation. By integrating three accelerometers, each of which is oriented in different axes, the degree of motion of a drone in any axis can be defined. This helps in collecting information on the drone's roll, pitch, and yaw, and feeding back this information to the drone's proportional integral derivative PID controller. In practicality, all gyroscope technology is heavily employed to help maintain a stable hover. When there is no input from the pilot, any wayward drifting or wobbling of the drone is detected by the gyroscope. This information is then relayed to the PID controller, which commands the drone motors to counteract unwanted moments. Gyroscopes are also essential to stable operation of the drone, that even a malfunction in the gyro sensors will very likely result in a crash. Barometers are sensors that measure air pressure. In drones, this air pressure information is used to determine the drone's altitude. The principle and technology behind this process are pretty simple. But air pressure readings are prone to drifting due to winds or any rapid changes in the drone's movement. To ensure the best performance, parameters need to be periodically using air pressure readings at the local sea level. Parameters are found in almost all drones and are mostly used to aid in maintaining a stable altitude. Autonomous drone missions with Changes in altitude are essential also make use of the readings from the onboard barometer. Although GPS technology can also be used to determine the altitude of a drone, barometers produce much more accurate data and provide faster feedback as long as they have been properly calibrated. The accelerometer of a drone works together with its gyroscope to determine changes in the position and movement, where the gyroscope specializes in reading rotational movements, an accelerometer performs better in reading linear movement along any axis. Accelerometers in combination with GPS technology allow your smartphone or fitness device to track your route when you are running or traveling. So how do these accelerometers work? There are a couple of accelerometer types that function in different ways, but most accelerometers rely on the piezoelectric effect. A piezoelectric accelerometer uses microscopic crystals that generate a current when they undergo stress. This stress can be brought about by accelerative forces such as movement of an object. Aside from the work done by the gyroscope, accelerometers also aid in allowing a drone to maintain a stable hover. The principle is essentially identical. Any movement of the drone caused by external forces such as strong gust of wind 
will be detected by the accelerometer and relayed to the PID controller. Controller then commands the motors to counteract the movement. Combination of three axis accelerometer and three axis gyroscope is what is commonly referred to as a six axis gyro stabilization. This setup allows a drone to maintain horizontal, vertical, and rotational stability while hovering. For applications such as professional grade drone photography and 3D act image study, six axis gyro stabilization is a must. GPS technology has played a huge role in allowing drones to fly autonomous missions. It's not a feature that can be found in all drones, but is a pretty standard inclusion for pro consumer grade models. By comparing the actual position of the drone with its targeted position, the PID controller determines which way the aircraft should move and instructs the drone motors with the appropriate commands. The principle behind GPS technology is pretty simple. A drone is out of, outfitted with a GPS receiver that can receive, receive signals from several GPS satellites. Depending on the location of the satellite source, time it takes for the drone's GPS module to receive the signal will vary by triangulating the relative position of the drone from deep, different GPS satellites. The location of the drone in a specified geospatial reference system can be determined. The accuracy of the drone will depend on the strength of the signal that the drone's GPS module receives and the number of satellites within its range. Despite the prevalence of GPS technology, it is not a foolproof method for determining a drone's location. Since it relies on the reception of signals from satellites located around the Earth's orbit, Lying under any canopy cover will drastically reduce the ability of a drone to determine a GPS location. Autonomous flight modes using GPS location will only function if the drone can identify a heading, basically an indication where the north direction is. Although it's possible to determine the heading based on the drone movements and relative GPS locations, this can only be done as long as the drone is constantly moving. There is also a bit of latency using this method, so the ability of the drone to follow a pre-programmed route and not be as accurate. In cases where determining the drone's heading using only GPS location is not appropriate, a drone needs to have a magnetometer. As its name implies, a magnetometer measures the strength and the direction of a magnetic field. Using this principle, a drone can always determine the direction of the magnetic north and adjust its trajectory accordingly. Unfortunately, it can be very easy to go a magnetic magnetometer off its course. Anything that emits a magnetic field, such as power lines, motors, and other electrical devices has the potential of disturbing the magnetometer's ability. This can be avoided from avoiding such disruptive forces sources and performing a calibration of the magnetometer periodically. There are different types of range finders found in drones, but all of them perform a simple task to determine how far away from the ground the drone is. It sounds like a range finder's function would be redundant with that of a barometer, then you are right. A range finder is basically an alternative to a barometer that has a more limited scope, but is much more accurate. For a range finder to function as intended, it needs to be pointed to the ground at all times. The most common range finders use sonar technology. By receiving sound waves from the direction of the ground, a sonar range finder can deduce the altitude of the drone. A laser range finder works in pretty much the same manner, except it uses lasers in range of sound waves. Laser range finders have a bigger range but are much more expensive. The main drawbacks of using a range finder is that it only works when the drone is hovering close to the ground. You may be wondering, given the limited range, why use a range finder in the first place? The answer lies in accuracy. The altitude reading of a range finder is unaffected by rift or sudden changes in wind strength. It also takes into account minor variations in topography. An IMU is not exactly a separate sensor of the drone, but instead a collaboration of several sensors. In most cases, a drone's IMU consists of accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers, each set of which works in all three axes of movement. 
So combining the capabilities of all these sensors, an IMU can detect changes in location and rotational attributes related to an aircraft's roll, pitch, and yaw by detecting the orientation and the strength of the magnetic fields. An IMU can even enforce on the fly calibration against orientation drift. Before drones were even a thing, the IMU models have formed the backbone of the navigation system of the manned aircraft, satellites, space shuttles, and missiles. Nowadays, IMUs are so common that they can be found in almost all smartphones and tablets, some game controllers, and self balancing hoverboards. IMUs allow drones to determine their location via a process called as dead reckoning. In this method, the drone position is determined using a previously determined location and the estimate speeds over the period of time from the previous reading. In simpler terms, an IMU continuously integrates the acceleration of the drone to calculate its velocity and position. This technology allows the drone to determine its approximate location even when GPS signals drop off, such as when flying indoors. A disadvantage of the IMU's use of multiple sensors is that the error that the sensors generate tend to accumulate. Since velocity and location are determined by integrating the acceleration of the drone, any error in the acceleration numbers will result in exponentially higher numbers in errors in both location and velocity. The drift caused by these errors can also get larger over time. For this reason, periodic calibration of a drone's IMU is strongly recommended. Software assisted IMU calibrations have been the norm for the modern drones, so this shouldn't be much of a show. Consider DJI. As the world's largest manufacturer of drones for civilian use, the company has embedded ground facing CMOS sensors in all its products since inception. These chips are not the cameras mounted on board to capture real estate listings or the local football game from 200 feet above. Instead, they provide a constant visual point of reference, that is, the ground immediately below that, when coupled with onboard memory and artificial intelligence, enabling DJI drones to hover precisely in place. If a gust of wind arises when the pilot is trying his shoes, should a low battery signal automatically recall a DJI drone to its liftoff coordinates, GPS sensors will return it to it in a few meters, but the embedded CMOS chip will navigate the final few centimeters for a precise touchdown. Similarly, vision-based sensors are also used for apps obstacle avoidance purposes, also where the sensors define the distance from the obstacle and slows down the drone for avoiding collision. Vision-based sensors are also useful for programming machine learning algorithms, where the algorithms can be trained to detect objects or other requirements such as stationary cars or weapons. These are the very useful uses of the array of sensors. To summarize the lecture, we had a look at various sensors that are on board of the drone. We looked at the gyroscope, barometer, isometer, GPS, magnetometer, rangefinder, IMU, and the vision sensor. In the next lecture, we look at understanding what a machine definition is and how it helps in planning and flying the drone. Thank you.